What is up everyone? So recently, a few days ago, the Monotype Council put up a Gen 9 Monotype survey to kind of ask people's opinions on the current Monotype meta. It's a pretty short survey, all things considered, so I'm going to be filling it out today, kind of giving my thoughts on these Pokemon, why I think they should or shouldn't be banned or suspected or whatever the case may be if they're broken, and kind of explaining my rationale behind those. So if you want to do this, it's here on the forum, you can click the link here. I think it's up here until, is it the 26th of June, 25th of June? Uh, so you have a couple of days to do this if you're interested. And um, I want to put a quick disclaimer first when I'm doing this video. If you're watching this video, please do not just click the survey and parrot my thoughts. Uh, if you agree with me, that's fantastic. You know, um, you're welcome to agree with me. But please, if you disagree with me, say in the comments down below and definitely reflect that in the survey. I want to have as many opinions on the survey as possible. I don't want to influence anyone, but just kind of give my own thoughts as to why. And if I can convince you, great. If you think I'm completely wrong, that's fine too. Fantastic. Let's have a, a healthy debate about that. So what is my Smogon username? Um, I guess King Krabs is probably the one I've known on, on the forum. Have I participated recently in any edition of the team tournaments? Um, nope, I have not. I don't really play tour tours too often. I mean, maybe I should play them a bit more often, but it's kind of a... Uh, it's not really my scene. I used to play them a lot more, but I'm just very busy with work and stuff. I barely get the time to make content as it is, and when I do, I like to make content for the channel. Not so much just playing in tours, but definitely quite fun. Are you in the top 100? Check this paste bin. I, I was at some stage, but I don't know if I am. I don't think I am here. Yeah, no, I'm not sure. Let's try strike crabs. King. Nope. It does not look like I am in the top 500. So I am at some stage, but obviously not this particular moment or where the snapshot in time this was taken. Um, I was in top 100 at the time. If you're top 100, was your alt um, not applicable? On a scale of one, how much do you enjoy the current metagame? I'd be lying if I said it was in the upper tier here of like 8, 9, 10. Probably like 6. I think pre-home I'd probably give like a 3 or 4. I think home definitely helped. It's not the perfect meta. I would probably give like Nat Dex a 9. I love Nat Dex monotypes. Maybe like 6 or 7. I think 7 is maybe a bit too generous. Yeah, because I think if some of these things get banned down here, it'll easily be a 7. But at the moment, probably a 6. Solid meta. Not my favorite, but still good. How competitive do I find the current meta? For me, how competitive I find something and how much I enjoy it are pretty much pretty much standard, like they're, they're across the board the same, so I'd say a 6 as well. Again, I think it could be a 7 or 8, um, which could push up my enjoyment to a 7 or 8 potentially, but at the moment I'd say a 6. On a scale of 1 to 10, how do I feel about King Gambit? 1 means not broken at all, where 5 means very broken. So let's look at King Gambit here. I mean, its stats are incredible, and Supreme Overload is, Overlord is an incredible ability. It On paper, I feel like it's super broken, but honestly, I haven't had like a huge amount of issue with it. Now, I'm generally quite liberal with bans and stuff. I'm like, yeah, ban stuff. That's the meta develop without uh, stuff getting in the way. So typically speaking, I would be very pro-ban. But in this situation, I kind of feel like it's not entirely broken, but it's not entirely healthy either. I'd probably give like a three. I think Steel and Dark are both very good types. You have Bisharp if it got banned. Maybe I give it a four. I don't think it's necessarily broken, but I would rather see a meta without it personally, because two top tier types don't necessarily need this amazing tool. The types would still be amazing without it, and there are some lesser types that would struggle a lot with King Gambit, especially if you don't really carry fighting coverage, which I think most teams do, but the odd team might not. I'll give it like a 4. Spectrier. Kind of the same boat. I think Spectrier got strictly better this generation. It got things Draining Kiss, uh, Psychic, which is really good because now it can actually run moves besides just Shadow Ball. And I think, does it have anything else? Not really. Hex, Dark Pulse are fine. Terror Blast if you want. A normal move, Mud Slap, Mud Shot for some reason if you're desperate for ground. Not ideal. I mean, Terror Blast is like, okay, not great, but well, this thing is really good. It's so fast. Ridiculous special attack and Grimne is... A really good ability giving you plus one special attack when you score a KO. I think it kind of took over Fluttermane slightly and Ghost is still a very good type. So again, for the same reason, I'd probably put Spectrier in like a four out of five broken. I think Ghost would struggle a decent bit more without it, but that's fine. I think Ghost is still a really good type, so it doesn't necessarily need it. And there are some weaker types that definitely, definitely just can't deal with this thing. Sneasler is up next. I'm going to be honest, I think Sneasler is highly overrated. I think day one people were 
really scared of Sneezer, thinking like this thing's gonna be incredibly meta defining. Now I think Dire Claw is a little broken. I don't like the idea of a 50% chance to sleep poison paralysis that just relies on too much RNG. For that reason, I think it's kind of broken. Personally, what I would do is ban Dire Claw. I know it's never gonna happen. Maybe there's like two Pokemon of Dire Claw. Nope, just Sneezer. Um, I would ban Dire Claw and let this thing be used because I think it's actually a necessary evil for both poison and fighting. The unburdened set is pretty cool and it's just a very good offensive typing with very reliable um, stats, good ability and unburden or a poison touch if you want to go down that route too. It's kind of a bit like Sneasler and in fact it's very offensive, very fast aggressive which kind of fighting likes and poison doesn't necessarily use a lot but it's kind of a nice addition to the team all the same. Now I think Dire Claw is inherently uncompetitive but if not for that, I think Sneasler wouldn't even be on the radar. I think Sneasler would be like a 0 out of 5 broken. It's just a solid offensive Pokemon. Unfortunately, I do think Dire Claw is a bit uncompetitive. I'm going to give it a 2. I, I don't think it should be banned. Maybe Dire Claw should be looked at, but that's a story for another day. Zamazenta Instant 5. So why this thing was ever legal is beyond me. I know it's not the Zamazenta Crown, which is like a million times more broken, but even still, this thing is just really fast. Really good defense. You can run like Assault Vest, um, bulky special defense. The attack is nothing to sniff at. Has a fantastic move pool. Personally, I'm a big fan of like Iron Defense, um, Body Press, Sub, and Crunch for Ghosts. This thing can be so hard to break through and it's just really good against a lot of physical offensive Pokemon and just gives a lot of um, kind of more physical teams a lot of trouble. Fighting is pretty okay now actually, but the Fluttermane's still around, granted, but Fluttermane definitely got a lot of manners put on it in the last few weeks with the home release. Still definitely a good Pokemon, still Fairy and Ghost are very good types, uh, but I think Zamazenta and fighting as a whole got a lot of tools, and I'll be very happy to see Zamazenta gone. Xianpao is kind of a weird one, because I think, yes, it's kind of broken, but also a necessary evil for something like Ice, because Ice is terrible. Um, if you've watched any of my recent videos, you'll see me, or I actually did a video recently with uh, Nathan Likes Chicken, so check that out. We talk about what kind of types got the most tools in Pokemon Home, or what the kind of balance is like now after Pokemon Home. And we both kind of agreed that Ice got basically nothing, and stripping that nothing from Xi, like, stripping Xi and Pao from nothing is, is just kind of cruel for Ice, in my opinion. Though that said, I wouldn't be totally opposed to see it gone on Dark, because I think Dark is going to become the next meta-defining type. With things like Jewel Screens, Gold Trace, and Xian Pao. Yeah, I'm pretty scared for the future of Dark. I think it could be really good. Now, unfortunately, I think for that reason, Xian Pao might get banned because it's so good on Dark, which is going to make Ice pretty much completely unviable, in my opinion. Again, if we were looking to complex ban things, I would say Xian Pao is probably like a 4 on Dark, and maybe like a 1 or maybe like a 2 on and ice so i guess the average of that is three i don't necessarily want to see it go for ice's sake but i think overall it might be healthier in the long run for this thing to go and are there any other current meta games that you believe are pokemon in the meta game that deserve a suspect test absolutely and those two are landorus incarnate actually I must spell these names right because i cannot spell uh lando i and urshi fu rapid strike these things are so so good um these things are always good as you can see them here they've been kind of sitting in the home page for a while now but this generation i think the two got crazy buffs now correct me if i'm wrong i don't recall landris having nasty plot part this generation and if you look at its stats you're probably thinking the stats are okay not particularly amazing however it does get access to sheer force and life orb making this thing not love orb love ball, life orb making this thing rid ridiculously powerful now i've even seen sets run things like rock slide oops maybe do minus there and they run rock slide kind of like this uh, to deal with things like bug frost moth volcarona and stuff which could otherwise potentially get us in trouble it doesn't even have to invest at all into attack to get this a pretty nice 287 and 329 special attack is kind of meek but it is sheer force and life force boosted you get things like um earth power crazy powerful and stab boosted and sheer force life orb boosted you get like sludge wave for grass types um you get rock slide which is actually sheer force life orb boosted as well you get psychic for poison types as well if for some reason they can resist earth power like a air balloon or maybe even crowbat and it's not in this generation it's a natex 
All these kind of things add up to make, I think, Landorus and Carnage just crazy powerful and honestly too much for the generation or this generation in a more limited Pokedex. I think it can absolutely break through so many teams. I was recently fighting a ground team that had this with my bug team and pretty much my only reliable way to win is hope it missed rock slide and I could KO it back with bullet punch with uh, Caesar, which is completely unviable. Just to hope for a miss at 90%. And next up, Urshifu, not only did I get Punching Gloves, which don't get me wrong, is kind of a double-edged sword because it means your moves no longer make contact, which means Unseen Fist doesn't necessarily work with Surging Strikes, but it does boost Surging Strikes even stronger. So this is now going to be Punching Glove boosted, as well as Stab, and will always crit hit three times, and you are no longer affected by things like Rocky Helmet, stack, uh, Static, Flame Body, all those kind of things that traditionally Urshifu kind of feared, it no longer has to worry about. But the real crux of this is Urshifu got Swords Dance this generation, making this thing pretty much unwallable. After one Swords Dance, even with not an adamant nature, if we go for a Jolly Nature here, 359 attack, Swords Dance, it has over 700 attack, simply nothing is living three stab, punching glove critical hits from this that are also going to ignore pretty much anything that you could do to it. It also gets things like close combat, drain punch if you want the longevity, ice punch if you want to get stronger with punching glove, though ice spinner is equally as good because ice spinner will actually not get punching glove boost, which is good for unseen fists so you can break protects with that. And just this thing's natural bulk is kind of crazy. Like it maybe doesn't look amazing 100, 160 is kind of like okay but if you take it into account it actually brought to my attention recently that's not too different from Conkelder's bulk and we all know Conkelder is very bulky this thing also gets decently reliable recovery in um drain punch so yeah i definitely want to see it banned alongside its wicked blowed uh, brother so they are probably the two main ones. If I looked at the tier, I could probably pick out a few things. I'm like, ooh, maybe that should be banned. But nothing really speaks to me outright like this thing is crazy, except those two Pokemon are probably uh, the biggest offenders from what I can see doing a quick scroll through the tier. Yeah, I think everything is fine. Honestly, I think Arcelina didn't make as much of an impact on this generation as it did in Natdex. In Natdex, you have more access to things like uh, Trick Room, Pivoting. That's not the case here. Now, maybe when the DLC releases, if we get Porygon 2 back with like Trick Room Teleport, then yeah, I could see Arceluna maybe being too good for limited decks, but at the moment, I actually think it's fine. Any additional comments or suggestions that you would like to make about the metagame? Uh, I would like to see... to see type specific bands such as Shin... Pao, that's what Shin Pao, it says it up here, P-A-O, Shin Pao being banned on dark but not ice, etc. I think that's a very far fetched stream, but I think it would add a lot to the health of the meta and kind of give types a bit more diversity and maybe types not get caught in collateral damage, like maybe something is amazing on one type, like a previous generation example might have been Kartana, amazing on steel, was it broken on grass? Probably, but maybe not. It's a weaker type, so I'd like to see kind of how the meta develops with types being, or Pokemon being banned on individual types as opposed to just being carpet banned across the meta. So again, don't think it'll ever happen, but I would love to see it. So that's kind of my thoughts on the survey. Let me know in the comments down below if you disagree or agree with anything I've said today. Uh, let me know if you're going to fill in the form too and what your kind of thoughts are. I think, honestly, these two, Landorus and Urshifu, are probably like way more broken in my opinion than anything here except probably Zamazenta or even on the same tier as Zamazenta if I'm being honest. So yeah, that's my opinions. Let me know in the comments down below what you think and I'll catch you next time everyone. Take care and thanks for watching.